keeps on texting me. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tammy and I just wanna talk about perfume with you. I bought a bunch of perfumes in June and I just wanna show you what they are, let you know my quick thoughts on them. Let's get started. So I'm going to start with um, the one you're probably most interested in and that is Kayali The Wedding. There's Silk Centel 36 and there is Velvet Centel 35. So I have the travel sizes, I have them right here and I'm gonna let you know my thoughts on these. When I saw Mona's video, I was actually super excited to try these little guys. Um, well, actually, the full-size bottles are so gorgeous. I love the design on the Silk Centel one with the little... Oh, it's so, so, so pretty. And, and I like the black bottle as well. But I lately, I'm just buying travel sizes for the most part because I just... That's all I need. And I'm happy with that. What about you guys? Are you still buying like full bottles of everything? Do you buy travel sizes sometimes? So you often hear about different brands having a certain DNA that you can kind of recognize. And with Kay Alley, I've never really noticed it that much. I feel like all of their releases so far are very indi individual, very different from each other. And I also feel like they're a brand that takes a certain scent family, let's say um, when they were going to do Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper, they took a note profile of like a rose patchouli scent, a jammy rose, a rose oud, you know, something like that. And they wanted to make their take on it and to make the absolute perfect version of that scent profile. When they did Mask 12, I feel like they took that category of fragrance where you've got like clean skin and you've got like just all of the musky light scents and they did their perfect ultimate version of that. All of their perfumes stand alone and are individual. But the wedding Silk Centel is the first time that I have recognized the Kayali DNA in one of their own fragrances. So when I first spray it, I definitely get Musk 12. It's even like prettier, a little bit more delicious than Musk 12, but it does remind me of Musk 12. And when I first sprayed it also, it's just so interesting. It, there's a memory associated with that when I first spray it, I definitely have a memory from my childhood and I don't even know what it is, but it was a summer day in my childhood when I first spray it out. So yeah, in the opening, definitely reminds me of Musk 12, but very soon after, it reminds me of Deja Vu White Flower. I only have the hair mist of that, but it reminds me so much of the hair mist. It's got that like twangy white flower vibe to it. And to tell you the truth, Deja Vu White Flower is the one of all of, of their scents that this reminds me of the most for most of the time. I definitely get the Vanilla 28 comparison. I've heard people compare it to Vanilla 28 and some people think it does remind them of Vanilla 28 and some people think it's a totally different vanilla. But to me, it does remind me of Vanilla 28 because for example, Dama Bianca, I've heard people compare it to that. But to me, that one, is a very molasses -y, molasses like vanilla. I just can't get on board with Dama Bianca. This is back more towards the brown sugar, just like vanilla 28 to me. And everyone's gonna get a little bit different uh, impression of it because everybody's different. Everyone has a different nose. Everyone has different, you know, scent receptors in their nose and different taste and different opinions. So something happens in this one that happens to me sometimes with orange blossom. And that is that I get a little bit of that cigarette smoke <laughs> scent that does happen to me with some orange blossom perfumes like even the deja vu hair mist i get a little bit of that cigarette smoke scent underneath which isn't necessarily a bad thing have you ever heard anyone talk about hot couture i mean everyone loves the fact that that smells like a raspberry and cigarette smoke com combination so <laughs> i'm not saying that that's a bad thing but for me i like i don't love smokiness that much so i would probably spray this on clothes more than on my skin because on my skin that smokiness comes out more. So if I were ever to get married again, I would be wearing something that shows a little bit of skin. I'd be wearing something that shows my new tattoo, obviously. Um, <laughs> but I would like, when I got married, um, oh, I'll tell you about that someday, but I was pretty young, very young. And I had like the poof sleeves and like the long lace sleeves and lace across here. and. 
I mean, I could have sprayed this on that because on fabric, I don't think that the smokiness is gonna come out that much on there. So I could have worn that for my wedding, but if I'm gonna spray it on my skin, this is not gonna be my wedding scent. However, it's very pretty. I don't get a lot of the sandalwood, funny enough, even though it's a sandalwood based fragrance, I don't get a lot of the sandalwood, maybe a little bit here and there. But to simplify it, it opens very similar to Musk 12, then quickly develops into something that is very similar to Deja Vu, and then picks up a little bit of the vanilla 28 DNA. This is just not linear at all. It just transforms into different so scent profile as it goes along. Moving on to um, Velvet Santal. So when I first spray this one out, It reminds me a little bit of Tom Ford Santel blush, which is one of my favorites. I actually own that and I love that one. It's not exactly like it, but it does remind me of the type of sandalwood that is in that scent and other Tom Ford scents, that same sort of sandalwood. And quickly it transforms into a fragrance that I own that I don't like that much. However, this is what I wish that one was. So I do really, really like this one. I actually like this one better than um, Silk Santel, to tell you the truth. Um, <clears throat> but let me grab it. And this one is Santel Musk by Narciso Rodriguez. This is one that I will be selling eventually. I'm going to wait until I do a big, um, declutter and I'll be trying to sell this on Poshmark. That's one of the only places I can think of that you can actually sell perfumes in Canada because you'll be able to print out a sticker and they have a certificate where they can actually ship perfumes, but, um, I can't send a perfume through the mail from here in Canada. So this one has something in it that bothers me and it's something that reminds me of glue. Um, and I just can't get past that. It just reminds me of glue. I want to like it. I know most people love it. Most people adore it. I wanted to love and adore it on, on paper. Let's say not sprayed on paper, but written on paper, the notes that I read I should love this and it should be my perfect ideal scent, but there's something in it that bothers me and I just can't get past it, which is why I'm really glad that this little guy came along because this guy, <laughs> Velvet Centel, is what I wish Centel Musk could have been to me. And I think that this is gonna be, mm, this is gonna be amazing layered with other things, like these two layered together. Like you've probably heard people say that. You don't really need my two cents. You've probably seen 15 videos at least on these by now. And I'm just a small creator. I mean, I, my, whatever, who cares what I'm talking about? But I really like them both. And yeah, these are good ones. So guess what else I got? After all these years, I finally got Vanilla 28 by Kayali. And it came in this little set with a little um, lipstick like a liquid matte lipstick. It's, even though it's like a light neutral pink, it's still too dark for me. So I'm using it as blush today, actually. And um, it had the little mini of the Vanilla 28, which originally, like I've had a sample of this for a long time. And when I first got it, um, I thought it was a little bit too close to the molasses type of vanilla that I don't care for, but it's deeper than that. It's more complex than that. Even though it's a simple vanilla, it's back towards the brown sugar side. Like, you know, just to give you an idea. So I just thought it would be really nice to have this to layer with things that I wish had more vanilla in them. And um, it's so cute. And I just like having all the little ones. I have, I actually made um, a short on here on YouTube that shows like my whole little collection of these minis. And anyway, this one I picked up in June and I'm glad I did. So let me tell you about another one that I got in June. Um, this is one that I actually, I put off getting for so long because of the bottle. Oh, I wasn't really fair to this little guy or girl, whatever. This is Fame by Paco Rabanne. And I mean, I feel like poor Paco Rabanne, they're really like, I feel like they're almost bullied. <laughs> they're, they're labeled as like basic. And I mean, it doesn't really help when they come out with like this, robot bottle I mean I don't know it'd be fun for kids but I don't know like maybe you guys like it the bottle I mean I'm not the biggest fan of it now this is just the 30 mil like I was telling you um I like to get um travel sizes in this one 
I wasn't available in the travel size for a long time. I've actually had um, email notifications on for if it ever came back in stock, but it has not. And so I ended up going with the 30 mil. And this has been a huge hit with my husband. He absolutely loves it. I really like perfumes that have that classic, I know it's probably overdone, but that jasmine vanilla sandalwood combo or jasmine vanilla and musk like i really like that combo so this does have um vanilla and it has jasmine and it has sandalwood oh my goodness i really like this one and i'm really glad that i stopped letting the bottle get in the way of me getting this because it's really good anyway so as i was saying that vanilla and sandalwood jasmine combo when you add mango to it it just like puts a whole different spin on it. It makes it a tropical scent, but without being the like the beachy sunscreen scent. It's not, it's a tropical, like it's a mango delight. I love it. And I actually got this with my points on Sephora. This is the Isle of Paradise body, like brilliantly bright body moisturizer. And this has notes of grapefruit and pineapple. So I've been using this as a base to layer under, um, fame and i tell you this is a really nice combination this is really really pretty it comes out really fast so um yeah this here mm, yeah it's just like a really light and pretty pineapple and using these two together this has lasted me all day long and my husband smells me like at different points throughout the day he's like oh that's a really good one i really like that so this has been a huge hit for him and me, and uh, I don't know. I highly recommend it. I, if you haven't tried it just because of the bottle, or it, I know everyone's different, so you might not like it. Some people think it's really basic, but I don't at all. I think it's actually really different. It's like all of those base notes in there and like the olibanum, which is like a, I think it's a form of frankincense. Maybe it's a resin. And you know how mango, the closer you get to the pit, the mango you almost get a little bit of a i don't know kind of a resinous smell to it or like a woody something like deeper um something more earthy uh so to me this is really hmm, i'm just gonna actually spray that on there um i really love this one it's really good tropical it's great for summer especially in the evenings because it's super long lasting so yeah have you guys tried this one? Now you guys, Sol de Janeiro came out with another three limited time summer releases. They did last summer and I got my favorite one last summer, which was Tropical Nights and I'm so glad I did. This summer, the three releases, uh, I really just wanted to pick one of them up. Two of them I did not like at all. So I got the one that I kind of liked and I got um, <laughs> When in Rio. So I know that it's basic. It's just kind of like a strawberry cotton candy smell i don't own a lot of perfumes like this it has not been a note profile like just that sweet kind of juvenile sweet fruity scent it's not something that i have typically purchased in the past so this is a departure for me this is actually something that i don't really have in my collection so it's not redundant at all um and even though it is kind of like i don't know kiddish like very strawberry cotton candy um you know just kind of just fruity there i mean i think it has pear and it has mm, maybe bergamot pear and bergamot and then there's jasmine and there's sandalwood and there's a bunch of base notes in it that keep it from being too just plain fruity body spray um out of the three this was the one i liked the best do not disturb smell to me like ariana grande cloud and i don't like that scent profile um that one was not for me at all and then bikini, bikini season, bikini lines, bikini. No, I'm thinking of tan lines, bikini season. I didn't like that at all. To me, that smelled really artificial. That smelled super juvenile. And I think people really, really love it. So don't go by me, but I'm just saying like out of the three, this was definitely the one I wanted. I already had Rio Radiance. And um, I think that was kind of like a separate, that was released this summer as well, but it was kind of a separate thing. It was just these three and this is the one that i picked you know it has amber it has some deeper notes so there is more to it than just the pear and the fruit um so 
I don't know. What do you guys think? Have you tried this? And which one of those three did you like best? So guys, something happened to me in the past year on my perfume journey. I used to hate the note of rose. And actually, I shouldn't say hate. I hate that word. I mean, I it's almost like a swear word to me. Like if I was typing it out, I would put like, you know, exclamation and at sign in the middle because it's it's not a good word. Um, I never used to like the note of rose in perfumes. To me, it was, I mean, I never like to say a perfume is old lady or because, I mean, that's the go-to. For people that really aren't into perfumes, they don't know how to describe that something is a rose scent that is powdery, that is a little bit soapy, that is spicy, peppery like a rose. They don't know how to describe that, so they just call it old lady. But to me, I always thought Rose was kind of old lady and I hate to even admit that. But over the past year, I have really fallen in love with Rose perfumes. And so I'm on a whole new journey. I'm on a whole new branch of my journey in fragrance. And I have just like starting to gravitate towards Rose perfumes. And I want to try out all these different ones. So uh, in June, I picked up two different Rose perfumes. One, you're not going to believe it is Fenty. And again, I have a travel size. I hope you guys don't mind me just having travel sizes, but what would you care? If I saw someone showing a travel size on a perfume video, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care a bit. Um, you know what the bottle looks like. This is a very realistic rose to me, like a very fresh rose. And then the blueberry that's at the top is very realistic. It smells exactly like mushed up blueberries to me now what else is in this um let's see what else have we got in there oh yeah so there's also there's also tangerine and if i get tangerine it's more of the rind it's more of a bitterness and there's also geranium in this not just rose but there's geranium geranium is not a flower that i really like the smell of that much in real life it's kind of peppery. It reminds me more of like a carnation. And uh, so you do have that little bit of peppery spiciness from the geranium and a little bit of the bitterness from the tangerine. So it's really different. I think that this is not a crowd pleasing scent. It's not a safe blind buy. That's for sure. I did smell it before I purchased it. I actually sprayed it in store and wore it. And as it dried down, it got a really nice sophisticated powdery smell to it but honestly like you can still smell the mashed blueberries in it like all the way through and so the rose is very lifelike and very realistic to me and yeah I'm really enjoying this and if it's not sweet enough you could always layer it with I haven't tried this but I suppose you could layer it with um you know vanilla 28 that'd be interesting or anything that was sweeter that had like caramel or anything would be really nice with it so yeah Fenty. <laughs> now, another one that I was super excited to get and I knew I would love, I could tell by the notes that I was going to love this, and that is um, Genesis by Brandt. So I have followed Grace on TikTok for a long time. Now, she, her husband, this is his company, and she actually had a discount code is either 20 or 25% off. And I was like, this is amazing, like, because it, it basically saved me, like, the tax and the shipping and everything. It was a total blind buy but I knew I was gonna like it. I knew it. Now, be careful because it's a little bit hard to pull the cap off. And my son didn't know that. So <laughs> he said, can I smell that? I'm like, yeah. And he was trying to pull it off and it didn't come off easily. So he unscrewed it and it does unscrew and it splashed out a little bit. So just be careful of that. But this is a gorgeous rose scent. Really, really amazing. I love this. So this has rose and saffron, there's cassis, there's javanol, which is a molecular form of sandalwood, and there's also natural sandalwood. So I love sandalwood and, oh my gosh, this is so nice. It is really deep and dark. It has tobacco in it and cashmere. You could probably get the vibe as I'm talking about it. Like if you smelled something with rose and tobacco and saffron and just think about what that would smell like, like you can kind of imagine. Um, I was feeling like this was reminding me of something that I had. And so I grabbed my little, I actually have a travel spray also, of uh, Midnight 07 by Lake and Sky. And 
they're not exactly the same at all, but in the deep dry down, they're actually quite similar. They have that like dark gothic vibe. In this one, the earthiness comes more from the saffron and the sandalwood, whereas in Midnight 07, you get the earthiness more from the patchouli and the vetiver. Oh, this is so nice. So yeah, I really get the rose in this one and it's just a deep, dark, sexy, rich, creamy, sandalwoody rose. Yeah, I am thrilled that I have this and it's gonna be amazing in fall and winter. I actually picked this one up, uh, Beach Paradise by Ocean Pacific or OP. Um, I was at Winners and I didn't go to Starbucks that day, so I didn't get my bacon gruyere egg bites and my drink. And this was $16.99, which would have been the same price as that. So I'm like, why not? Uh, it was a total blind buy. Um, it's not listed on Fragrantica, so I had nothing to go buy. Actually, I could have like gone more in depth Googling because once I did, once I got home and Googled it, I did find out what the notes are. I love these little bottles. Like I have the, uh, the blue one with the waves on it. What is that one? You probably know, I'll pop it up. Um, this is so pretty for $16.99. Um, I mean, it's a light, watery, fruity scent. It is kind of beachy because it has, you know how like, let's say the original Jennifer Aniston perfume and uh, what else like Beach by Bobbi Brown, they don't smell like the type of sunscreens with the coconut and the kind of tropical smell um but i think in in uh like i don't know england and different places their suntan lotion smells just like lotion like kind of like just plain lotion just creamy not really much of a scent to it that's kind of the vibe i get from this too it, it could be almost classed as a little bit soapy this would be an amazing like refreshing body spray to take to the beach with you and if you're starting to feel sweaty and gross spray this it is so light and happy and watery fruity um what is in this one i actually have the screenshot on my phone so i'm not going to bother grabbing it but um i think this one actually had magnolia as well oh yeah there's don't forget there's uh magnolia in fenty so that could be another one i could do for my magnolia tattoo um perfume dedication video. Uh, anyway, yeah, I forgot there was magnolia in this one. And yeah, there is in this one. Now, I've never actually smelled a magnolia in real life. I feel like I've heard that they have a little bit of a citrusy um, floral scent to them. And I've also heard that they're buttery. So I don't know, maybe it's a buttery citrus. <laughs> Let me know if you know what a magnolia smells like. Um, but anyway, this is a really cute little one. Let me know if you've smelled this. I thought it was a really fun summer pickup. I just want to tell you about a couple samples that I received um, in one of my Sephora orders. One is um, by the brand Floral Street. It's a collaboration with the Van Gogh Museum, and I think part of the funds go towards the Van Gogh Museum. Um, it's called Sweet Almond Blossom Eau de Parfum. So this is not on Fragrantica, but I did go to the website and look it up, and there was some information on it there. So when you first spray this out, it is very sour and tart mouth-wateringly tart. Um, so when I went to the website and found the notes, I found out that there was pomelo and there was passion fruit. Now, I don't know what pomelo smells like, but I looked that up and it said that it smells a lot like grapefruit. And I already know that passion fruit smells almost identical to grapefruit. I actually buy passion fruit um, and you cut it in half and you scoop out those seeds and they have like the kind of slimy stuff holding all the seeds together if you taste that and when you smell it it is 95 percent similar to grapefruit it is sour just like grapefruit you know refreshing tart citrusy that's what passion fruit smells like every time i used to hear passion fruit i always thought it was a sweeter smell but actually it's very sour so when you first spray this you get the burst of sourness but very quickly it starts transforming and you get that apple blossom and just a little bit of like soapiness almost like a lot of times um blossoms on trees and stuff do have a little tiny bit of a soapy smell if you've ever smelled them in nature very soon after the vanilla starts coming out there is um sandalwood in this so you, it starts getting deeper and richer and there's tonka and you get almost a nutty vibe from that 
<clears throat> all right i sprayed fame over the top of it but when this is completely dried down this smells like zadig and voltaire this is her that's what this smells like when it dries down like and i'll keep smelling my hand i've done this several times i've tried this out i keep on smelling my hand and i'm like that's this is her so 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 similar to this is her by zadig and voltaire now if you like this is her but you find it a little bit too overpowering a little bit too like linear because when you spray this is her you get what you're going to get through the whole life of the perfume the smell doesn't change to me on me it doesn't um it's just very strong and nutty the whole way through in that beautiful sandalwood actually this is her is is better than this in my opinion um i'm not going to purchase this as far as i know but i just thought it was interesting i haven't seen it talked about anywhere i haven't seen it um mentioned it's brand new and it's just very interesting it says enchanting sensuous ethereal and hypnotic wow that's quite a description but yeah and the bottle is super pretty i'll pop up a picture um this van gogh painting in the in you know in the scenery in the background of the bottle so anyways if you're wondering like i was pretty excited that i figured out like i'm so new in my perfume journey that when i figure something out on my own without ever having read it i'm like that smells like this is her. I was just excited and so proud of myself. <laughs> I'm such a goof. Sweet Almond Blossom by Floral Street. And last but not least, there is a new perfume by Gucci and it's one of their Flora line and it is Gorgeous Magnolia. This, again, this is not on Fragrantica. Um, I haven't seen anything about it, but I looked it up on online and I found out what the notes were and I actually can't remember right now, but on the card it says Magnolia Essence dewberries accord and patchouli essence i was quite interested in this because it is gorgeous magnolia and i think i have some gorgeous magnolias here and i actually really like i wish they would come out with like little ones like the little small bottles even like 15 ml or something would be cool sprayers not roll-ons and i wish they would come out with like the little set with gorgeous gardenia gorgeous jasmine and gorgeous magnolia now there, I think these are re-releases of ones that they had originally. Like this originally was Glamorous Magnolia, like in the clear bottles, the Gucci Flora bottles. When I first spray this, it's a very shampoo-y smell. Like it smells like a very fresh, floral, fruity shampoo. And I wonder if Magnolia has a little bit of that shampoo like tendency towards it. So yeah, I sprayed it out. It smelled like a very fresh and clean shampoo. And within a minute or so, this, have you ever had scented Play-Doh before? Like the grape, the purple Play-Doh, this like scented grape, it came out. And the exact color that you see in this card, that was the smell I was getting. I was smelling this kind of purple, like a cloudy purple. Very quickly, that became more balanced with, I, there's a note of dewberry. And the only other time I've seen Dewberry is in Fatal Intense by Agent Provocateur, which I own. I talked about in my um, Perfumes I'm Honored to Own video. And um, that perfume has a chocolatey vibe. And this one ends up in the end, in the deep in the dry down, ends up a little bit with a chocolatey vibe to it. So I wonder if Dewberry, even though I actually looked up what a Dewberry was, and it's very similar to a Blackberry, but I think it might be even more sweet, or maybe it's more tart. I'm not sure, but... Anyway, it's kind of related to the blackberry, but I wonder if it has a chocolatey essence to it somehow. I don't know because, and even um, dewberries are also in Perialis Orchid 18, which I own that one too. And I love that one. And that one also has patchouli and this one does. I don't really notice the patchouli too much in this. At the beginning, it almost reminded me of a Marc Jacobs fragrance, kind of just like a fruity floral, but it does get creamier and sweeter and although it never becomes anything like groundbreaking, it's actually a very nice scent. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, it just gets very creamy and sweet. I mean, it's a pretty basic scent, but it's actually so nice. So guys, that was my June fragrance haul. I am trying to do No By July. I, I think I can do it. There's been a few sales that have come along and I've already resisted. What did you guys pick up in June? Let me know. And are you doing No By July? I wanna know. I'm really glad that you joined me today. Thanks for spending this time with me. Thanks for clicking on that thumbnail and I will see you guys next time. Bye. This is not even a week old. It's still a little bit like, you know, crusty. <laughs>
So yeah, I'm going to do a whole other video on my tattoo, my thoughts on my tattoo and um, perfumes with the note of magnolia in honor of this tattoo. So um, that'll be coming up in the future. But anyway, so far, um, it's it's taken me a little bit to get used to it. I mean, I this is only my third tattoo and I, I couldn't be happier with the placement. I couldn't be happier with the shape of the flowers, the size that they are. It's exactly what I wanted. The style of it though isn't exactly what I asked for and you know while you're getting a tattoo you're talking to the guy and he's like well you have to have lines you can't have just shading and I wanted just shading and no lines really um I wanted it to be very realistic and I don't know what do you think anyways it takes a while to get used to a new tattoo I know because this is my third tattoo and um one of them I cried and cried over because it just wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I ended up loving it. And I do love this. It's just not exactly what I wanted. You know what I mean? Does that happen to you? Are you a tattoo veteran? Like, <laughs> let me know. Um, I kind of wanted it. I feel like it's a little darker than what I wanted to. I really wanted it to be light. I wanted all in shading, no lines. And uh, that's not exactly what I got. But um, I don't know. I think as it heals, it it will lighten up, it won't be so dark black, like the lines will be a little more like a lighter gray. And maybe I can have it touched up, like maybe I can have like some white to go over the really black parts to like gray it out a little bit. And maybe I can also like from far away, these spots look like two circles, almost like goggles or something. And so maybe I could have that filled in a little bit. And I don't know, what do you think? Y'all need to hype me up. You know that song? Y'all need to hype me up. I meant to say also, when I first got the Fenty, um, there were a few perfumes that I thought it was reminding me of. One was um, the black bottle, the Nina Ricci Lextaz, or is it the Absolute? I'm not sure which one it is, but I thought it reminded me of that one, so I tested it with that. Um, then there was Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. I thought it reminded me of that one a little bit. Um, it, it wasn't exactly like those, like they all have like a lack of sweetness. They're all like a rose that is not, it might be sweet like a rose, but it's not sweet from any caramel or vanilla or anything like that. Um, at least not much to my nose. Um, but you know what I ended up comparing it to that actually was most similar to was Kaali Elixir 11. So I just wanted to mention that I'd kind of compared those. Okay, I just forgot to, I just finished recording and put away all my stuff. So I forgot to mention that and I just thought I'd pop in and say, tell you that. <laughs> Abby, if you're watching, I use my fan too. Sometimes you just, you need to. Oh, it's kind of hot and humid out today. Whew, okay. Now, I'm not gonna spend too long on each one, um, especially because I'm stumbling and mumbling around. I'm. You know, when I watch back my videos, a lot of times I find I'm like I'm very stiff and starchy. I'm not meaning to be like that. I just, for some reason, as soon as I turn on the camera, I don't know, my, my brain shuts down, my mouth doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know what happens to me, but I promise I am fun and not stiff and starchy. <laughs> but I don't know, like I can't ah, get it out there. Anyway. Uh, the type of lipsticks that I like are so light. Like I don't like anything dark. I don't, I like it to be lighter than my lip color. And I like them to be completely neutral, almost no color to them. And I like them to lean cool. So I have about 50 lipsticks that are in that same category. And I thought about doing a video on that sometime. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Maybe not, I don't know, but just let me know. Um, Sorry, I'm saying, saying um so much. That's... <laughs> I'm so hot. Oh my word. I didn't even realize how humid it was, honestly. I'm trying to just be myself. It's really hard when you know you're filming. It's really hard. Um, yeah, so. Dewberry. What else is in it? I can't remember. I wish I had my screenshot. <laughs> Very strong. <clears throat> it's 
So yeah, I definitely get the rose in this one. I'm really glad I'm adding. So, oh, smell. It does get really creamy and it, yeah it gets really creamy and you know you know you know am I ever gonna get more comfortable and more like natural like I just want to be me I don't want to like it's not it's just me talking to you because I want to talk about perfume I don't want to put on a show I just want to connect with you guys and I just want to like be myself how am I doing <laughs>